couldn't get the right Irish plate, but I definitely have the right Japanese plate. I thought it'd be pretty cool just to make a little video, a little update on how the car is getting on. Ireland is mostly dull, mostly just this weather. And on days like today, it just looks unbelievable. Like the way the, the clouds just cast a kind of a gradient on the car. Finally as well, it has the long champs on it. And uh, I put back on the side skirt. So kind of a funny story. The first day I went for a drive in the car with the Star Sharks on it, the very first day I went for a spin, I fucking, because I had like calculated perfect dimensions for the wheels, I don't know if you can see that on camera, maybe not, but I've actually cooked the paint here on the fucking arch. Jackie was pretty upset about that, so was I to be honest, like it was the first time I drove the car on the road, so I'd like made the wheels just perfect, but I didn't take into account that the solid axle would push across to the right when there's weight in the car so uh went to the beach loaded the car up tried to use it as a normal car but have like ridiculous stance with no clearance whatsoever and uh when we were going out one of those back roads that we were just on a minute ago i absolutely cooked the arch with the star sharks so i didn't really want to raise the car at all i just love this look this is the look i've always wanted it's incredibly unpractical but uh i don't know if you can see it maybe you can but from here to here is bubbled off, so I'm gonna have to get that rectified. I've raised it a couple of mil on the back and I put on the long champs, which are the same size as the Star Sharks, but the long champs, the long champs were always the look. I just wanted to make the Star Sharks because they're probably like my second favorite small wheel, and I've always wanted to build wheels, like, you know, turn something that was small and crap into something good. But uh, this was the look. I'm still terrified of it, to be honest. So I'm a bit nervous when I'm driving it. Like I'm enjoying it and I'm pushing it and stuff, but like it's uh, an 8.6 and it's tricky. And yeah, I don't know. And I also have it like, it's not really back road material the way it is right now. Like it's kind of more, it looks like it's supposed to be like on a track in Japan and I'm driving it on shitty Irish roads. So ironically, the only part of the car that we didn't take apart when we were restoring it was the axle. Because I was told it was in good condition and Dan probably just didn't remember. But uh, yeah, the second we went for a spin, uh, got the car over 40 kilometers an hour, it started making this excruciating loud noise in the rear. And the thing about a whining noise with the crown wheel and pinion is if you don't fix it, it just gets louder and louder and louder. And I've driven the car up and down to Mondello for uh, 86 Festival, uh, like LZ Fest, all these things. So like I've. Uh, just made it worse. So I've ordered a crown wheel and pinion for I just want to get that sorted. But I didn't want to do it in the middle of the summer because then I wouldn't have got the car to any events or anything. So, so I've kind of just lived with it. I've also learned that having a Exedi Hyper Carbon single clutch is probably not the best thing for like daily and stuff. I'm probably talking through my arse, but I looked into it and like the carbon clutches cool down and they start slipping.
need to get a clutch and flywheel also expensive I mean rebuilding the rear end of the car is like a thousand euros alone for a crown wheel and pinion and all the bits and then a clutch and flywheel is like a thousand euros so you know you spend seven years building this car and then like I've got to spend like another couple of thousand euro just to get it to work properly so I still don't actually know what it feels like to drive it without it being extremely noisy because since the first time I've driven it it's been ex it's just been horrible like and it's just getting louder and louder and the clutch slips when you try and floor it another great story that uh okay i'm full of stories here but the first night we went for a drive it was a couple of days after i burnt the arch uh, we were heading out a road that's the same road i drove the jdm distro for the last seven years at all hours and uh, i decided to lead the pack because i wanted to see what the car was made of i was like right i'm gonna go as fast as i can and just really get the feel for this engine and everything now you know like this will be awesome and uh, I got up to about 130, 140 kilometers an hour and a fox ran out in front of me and smashed the whole front of the car. Can't really see it now, but I've got aluminium bumper brackets which are in there and I just bent them back out with a hammer. You can kind of see the, the crumple on it there. I think the aluminium brackets took most of the impact. Otherwise they would have been fucked. And if he hit dead on, I think it would have like been awful. Like, But uh, somehow it only damaged this and the wing is a little bit bent very slightly the paint is actually starting to fucking crack on it now so thankfully I had the good line in stock I just threw it on I was pretty upset to be honest like but look you know you're out fucking around in these cars trying to have a good time and uh, this shit's gonna happen but thankfully I absolutely adore this look so you know I'm very happy with it and I just think the good line looks so good without indicators without anything it has just such a menacing front end so it's hard because like you know me and Jackie spent 18 months doing the paint job like and he spent like probably two months on the front bumper and the lip and for it to just be smashed by a fox while I'm going full speed I text him straight away just to tell him and in fairness to Jackie that's what I love about him like we put that much effort into it, but he's like the cars are made to be driven so you know this shit's gonna happen from going to car shows, people brushing past with their fucking jeans, scraping the shit out of the out of the mirrors. Yeah. And the paint as well. So so many people are like, oh get it like uh, what's it called? Covered in a thin layer of that plastic stuff, PPF is it or I don't know, I want to drive this car and I want to enjoy it. I want to let it age gracefully, like I don't want to baby it and keep it pristine or put it in a bubble or not use it and stuff like I've said it in the comments and I've said it to people at like events and shit. Like I don't want to sound like a broken record, but uh I spent fucking seven years building this car, so I want to make seven years of memories with it. And like smashing into a fox at like 130, 140 kilometers an hour, and uh, like burning the arch from going to the beach to go for a swim on a sunny day, like it's all part of the story, like, and it's all part of the new story of, you know, driving it like this. I want to put a sun visor on it, I haven't done it yet. I've just been enjoying the stages, maybe a couple of small stickers, but uh, I'm really just enjoying showing off Jackie's paint job. I had the side skirts off with the good line look there for a little while, but I, I decided to put them back on. The car just looks very complete. I keep going out to the shed and thinking like that the car is just gonna be a project in a million pieces, and then it's not. It's just like, it's right here. Finished, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. I think we used uh, Spuri's valve stem seals on the head because it was Dougie's other head, he'd built it. So the engine is actually drinking a lot of oil and it's quite smoky not super smoky but it's like you can smell it so we may potentially have to take the head off and inspect down the line oh well you know I think part of it as well was uh, we built a fresh engine and then I was just like driving it in and out of the spray boot and I didn't really bed it in properly so it's either not bedding it in or it, it's the valve stem seals another thing for us to look at the exhaust is really loud as well like I knew it would be loud because it's a khaki motor but I might have to put like another kind of resonator or silencer or something on the system it's like really really raspy you can't get the correct size Japanese plates in Ireland so I think they're at 330 by 165 the only plate that fits on an 86 is like a perfect size because there's no room for anything else so I need to get a plate made up that's the correct size this is just like temporary I had the I had the shitty plates on it which you've seen when we drove it to like a uh, KC and stuff but yeah this is like NCT friendly other people have been asking as well I haven't actually got a chance to get it in for a test yet it's booked in there was like a backlog in Ireland so I just picked the date and the more I drive it the more little marks are getting on it like I mean even the bonnet there's little chips and stuff because it's fiberglass what do you do like do you know do you just baby it forever 
someone else was suggesting getting a ceramic coated. Maybe I still will. I don't know. I just, uh, yeah, I've tried to, been trying to enjoy it. It already needs a paint correction. You're, you're not going to see it on a day like today because this is the perfect day for this kind of stuff. But like on a really sunny day, like I'm after buying the two bucket system. I'm trying absolutely everything. Microfiber towels. Like I've, I bought everything I need to try and keep it as pristine as possible. But uh, yeah, black. Just by drying the car, I'm. I'm fucking scratching the paint, like, e I don't know a way around it, to be honest, like, so, might have to get it corrected and sealed over the next while. The plan now for winter is, um, I've got a load of stuff on juice box I want to catch up on, and because we, like, sped up all the 8.6 stuff, like, I went back and I did, like, our final bout stuff, and I have a few other projects I want to unveil on the channel, so, I'm gonna pull this apart pretty soon as well and uh, fix everything that I just told you about, so. Yeah, I guess the number one thing a lot of people have been asking me is, did it live up to the hype? Seven fucking years of building this and obsessing over every little detail and like, yeah, I, I guess it did, like. I don't really know what I expected, but uh, I think the only thing that I didn't anticipate was just the nervousness of, everything like because it's brand new and I've never actually really had an 86 except for this but I've been building it for so long all the little noises just the car's character and personality like there's been a couple of times where it's kind of like uh it's kind of stepped out or you know like in but there's just there's loads of little things I just need to learn the car like, all these things that I wanted to do that were on paper and stuff like have it that low and whatever I'm trying to find like compromises without completely changing my tune but uh, I want to get a running and driving 100% like with a nice clutch nice flywheel and uh, just a fixed rear end and then I would like to do a track day in it maybe and stuff like like I know I know there's gonna be more little stone chips there's gonna be more stupid things happening because I'm an idiot and like I can't help but want to just drive and enjoy and push the limits of the things that I, I own I've just been like that with everything over the years I've got a mountain bike that if I break I can't afford to fix it uh, same with these cameras it's kind of the same with this thing, like, you know, I love it and I'm I'm probably more than the deposit of a really nice house into it and if anything happens to it, yeah, we'll just cross that bridge when it comes. I have no pisser jets either, which is something I haven't addressed yet. I just don't have the heart to drill a hole in the bonnet. Maybe I'll put something back here. It's, it's funny, it's, it's funny how, like, Pristina was the day that, like, we drove it over with Flip and I was talking about it and I even said it in that, that it'll probably be, ne it'll probably never be that clean ever again. Yeah, she's a little under pressure, the L hood, because I have the Yukia Shukai. I've got the Yukia Shukai heat shield on now. I need to put some heat protection here because the the manifold, the L Powercraft is like just dissipating quite a lot of heat. I'm still uh, taking the big gamble here, really, by leaving these exposed. I bought um, Jubride meshes to try and stop this, but uh, I'll cross that bridge when it comes. Also need to tidy this up. This is kind of just longer than it should be. And it's fucking banging off the tension rod bracket, so. Yeah, another thing I didn't anticipate was uh, we put the igniter and the coil in here on the tunnel. You can kind of see them in there. And uh, they get extremely hot. When, we're, uh, when you're driving. So I'm gonna have to get an ECU, I guess. The the stock ECU was kind of just a temporary thing, but uh, I can't run my stereo or my gauges, so when I go to car events, I've just been mocking them in there for now, which is a bit lame. The new list. See, the thing is, I guess I never, I never drove this. I never actually, you know, I drove it around the business park a couple of times, and then we stripped it, so. These are all the things I'm quickly learning about. I got Tech Arts uh, Matsford off Andrew Joyce, but I need to trim him for the cage. A while back, I went down a wormhole because if you've watched these videos for a while now, you'll know like that I tracked down the history of the car and I figured out where it was from, and uh, I got the license plates from exactly where the car was originally registered. So in a magical world, if the car still lived in Japan and it still lived in the same region, this is the plate that it would have on it. So this is Shonan, and then because the car is a 500 class, because it's under two liter, so I couldn't get the right Irish plate, but I definitely have the right Japanese plate. And uh, some people don't know this, but um, 
in Japan, when you go to the DMV or the like, you know, the place where they do an inspection on your car and stuff, you get the plate then, and then this is a security steel that stays on the car. Yeah, it's mad, so you can't tamper with any of this stuff. If I pop it off, you'll see the outline underneath for it. So that's where it would have been in Japan. I just wanted to have the exact plate with the exact security seal, exactly how this would be displayed if it was still driving the streets of Japan, especially where it was from. So yeah, Shonan is an area in Kanagawa. That's where the car is from. And uh, yeah, that's the Kanagawa security seal to match this plate. And then this is like the exact plate that, well, it's not the exact plate, but it would have been a plate that would have been given to this 86. So, you know, Goodline is from Kanagawa. So uh, all this front end and how this car was styled with the wheels, the long champs and all that, is the early run-free style from Kanagawa. Because my car is from Kanagawa, I thought it'd be cool to style it like a car from Kanagawa. I've said Kanagawa quite a lot there. And then go down the extra wormhole to get the Kanagawa plate. I'm way too nerdy into this. I know it's a bit cringe, but I don't care. Look, it is what it is. I, I'm not gonna just my, find myself to people on the YouTube channel, because you know how weird I am already when it comes to this stuff, but a uh, nice little touch to have at car events and shit. We will take it off, because I would get a lot of trouble by the cops here, but uh, super cool. See what I mean? The plate is like a perfect fit, and uh, nobody in Ireland makes the proper size Japanese plate, which is kind of annoying. It's fucking driving, it's on the road, and every time I drive it, regardless of how loud and shitty it is, I'm very happy. let this video end without doing some rings it's long overdue a lot of people have been asking this is something that we wanted to do for ages but uh, because my videos are behind and stuff you will have seen Jimmy Oaks take the thunder when the actual cone outfit that we had for my rings we used it at a uh, LZ fest this was the original plan so it was to try and not kill you in the cone outfit and what are we doing now exactly that <laughs> celebratory <laughs> rings <laughs> Woo! oh Jesus okay <laughs> yeah, you look great. There it is. Oh, ooh, there's your baby. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this uh, little catch up on the ship box, which I guess is an expensive ship box. So we'll see you in the next one. Come on, you. Come Bye, on. everybody. <laughs>